Hi everybody, happy Thursday and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. My name is Ashley and I'm with my colleague Dave and today Dave will be teaching you the AutoCAD basics. Learn AutoCAD in 50 minutes. We also have with us Nauman and Bryce who will be helping to answer some of your live questions in the background. So a little bit about us. Um, Dave is a technical support specialist in the Manchester office. I'm also a technical support specialist based out of Boston. Bryce is a technical support specialist as well based in our Lake Oswego office. And Nauman is our Autodesk expert elite in Ohio. So before we get started, we have a couple of quick polls for you. And the first one that we have is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? And we'll give everyone a few more seconds to get your answers in. And it looks like that was pretty quick. All right, so it looks like for 78% of you, this is not your first webinar, so welcome back. For 22% of you, this is your first webinar, so a very special welcome to you. And the second poll that we have here is which AutoCAD that was not the correct one. Which AutoCAD based application do you use? All right, we'll give everyone a few more seconds. All right, so it looks like most of you are using AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. A few of you are using architecture, MEP, and other verticals. All right, perfect, so thank you for your help. Uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window, and Bryce and Nauman will answer them as best they can. This session will be recorded, and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, and of course, in the chat window. Some of our upcoming webinar topics include AutoCAD 2018, New and Improved, and that's on April 13th, an introduction to drafting with precision in AutoCAD 2018, and that's on May 8th. Well, Ashley, uh, one second, Ashley. I, yeah, I was just going to ask if uh, everybody's seeing her screen because I'm not seeing. Show me screen. Can I see it now? Is it coming? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. So again, some of our upcoming topics, um, April 13th, AutoCAD 2018, New and Improved, May 8th, an introduction to drafting with precision in AutoCAD 2018, June 15th, an introduction to layer management properties and modification, again in AutoCAD 2018, and then July 13th, annotation um, your drawings in AutoCAD 2018. Feel free to watch past webinars on YouTube. We have our Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist. If you'd like to download the data sets, um, you can do that from Box if you'd like to follow along. And of course, our Autodesk Knowledge Network, we have a ton of information there for AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, as well as many of the verticals. You can find troubleshooting information. Um, if you're just getting started, there's a ton of learning information there as well, installation and licensing. So please check out those resources. So this week's agenda includes the user interface, basic commands, layers, object snaps and tracking, and viewports. So Dave, are you ready to show everyone how this works in AutoCAD? Well, we can give it a try at least, yeah. So let me uh, switch it over to me. Uh, let me show my screen. Okay, it looks like you can see everything. All right, so, uh, so this is Dave Pothier, and uh, I've been using AutoCAD for a short period of time now, um, going back to 19... 87 or so, <laughs> um, but version 2.6, so I've been using AutoCAD for a little bit. Um, and uh, what, basically, you know, what, what I'm trying to accomplish in, in this webinar is to combine a little bit of uh, a lot of the different things that we've covered over the last year and a half. So we've been doing lots of webinars. Um, we've covered an uh, awful lot of things in a very uh, in-depth way. And um, at the end of this presentation, uh, we'll show you in the PowerPoint, which you can download, that there's a, a link to you know the various webinars that we've created, um, as well as uh, some specific webinars that go into a little bit more um, depth 
in, uh, in some of the topics that, that I'm going to be covering here. Um, I know that a lot of people spend a lot of time going to a trade school and stuff, learning AutoCAD. I'm going to, I'm so good I can teach you this in 50 minutes or at least give you a little introduction to it in 50 minutes or so. Uh, so I'm going to cover as much as I can. Uh, I'll try to, um, you know, at least expose you to everything that you need to, to get started with AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT. So the, the first thing is the user interface. Um, the uh, screen that we have here is what you see when you first start AutoCAD. Uh, in this case, I'm running AutoCAD LT. And I will pop uh, open AutoCAD, you know, the full version of AutoCAD uh, briefly uh, just to show some of the differences and some of the things that are kind of hidden by default that you might want to see if you're using the full version of AutoCAD. Uh, but the, uh, the initial screen here is you know, pretty self-explanatory. There's a section on uh, how to start a drawing file. Uh, there's a section for the most recently used files you know, that have been opened up. And then over on the right side, there's basically some uh, informational things, you know, if there's an update or things like that that you might need to get to. Um, so the, the normally what we're going to do when you first start AutoCAD is starting a drawing. And when you start a drawing, uh, you want to start with a template. So there's a, a number of templates that come out of the box. Uh, there's a, a great webinar actually on how to set up a template uh, with your drawing standards and such. So that's that's one uh, webinar that you may want to take a look at uh, later on because uh, I'm not going to get into that. That uh, takes a little bit too much time for uh, trying to give you a general intro. But basically, if you sit, select a start drawing, it's going to open up the drawing file with the template that you have chosen. Uh, it, you can pick whichever templates you want. So if I go, um, so this is the uh, application menu up here in the upper left-hand corner. If you select on the little drop down there, you can go down to new, and I could start a new drawing. And you can see that there's a number of templates that should bring you directly to the templates folder that's set up by default. And, uh, and here I'm just using the acadlt.dwt. So there's um, a DWT file is a template file. A DWG is a drawing file, and they're really the same draw, same thing. It's just that the extension is identifying this as a template as opposed to a DWG file, which is just a general drawing. Uh, but you always want to be starting with a uh, with a template, and preferably one that is set up for your company standards, with your title blocks, with your uh, uh, layout set up, with your uh, you know for plotting and uh, any layers that you might need, etc. Um, so here, so this is, the, once you're inside of AutoCAD, this is basically what you will see. And there's a couple of things that I always change uh, in AutoCAD. Uh, it just makes me happy going back to the uh, old uh, versions of AutoCAD. So I don't like a, a floating command line. So he, this is where you would type in commands. Uh, I like having it docked. So I always just drop it down and dock it at the bottom of the screen. and um, basically is out of the way and, and uh, still handy for people to, you know, for you to be able to type in and stuff. Uh, but that, like I said, that's where you're going to, you know, type commands. And you'll see throughout this presentation that uh, you can choose between selecting commands or typing commands. Uh, I particularly like to type, again, I've been using a, a computer for a long time, and I find it faster to type in L for line as opposed to going up and selecting the line command up in the ribbon. It's, uh, you know, your left hand needs something to do, and it's a great, you know, great thing to, to use the keyboard once in a while. Uh, but so once you're in here, there's a, a couple main sections to the user interface. And uh, I apologize for anybody that has been using AutoCAD for a long time and, um, I'm not going to tell you to not listen in to this presentation, but um, I, I will be covering a lot of little basic stuff uh, in this presentation. So it, uh, the main user interface, you can have this, the ribbon up at the top. And that's basically all of your drawing tools, um, dimensioning, uh, layer properties, et cetera. Uh, if, um, if you go over to the Insert tab, you, know, you can insert. Uh, different types of files or blocks, 
uh, annotate tab goes into a little bit more depth with more stuff about text and dimensioning, um, revision clouds, things like that. Uh, parametric, we're not going to really touch about, talk about today, but uh, that's basically adding constraints to your file. And we're going to stay away from that for this uh, presentation. Uh, view is going to be where we can open or close various palettes, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, manage is uh, going to you know, get into some additional things. Um, command alias is one that we'll probably take a quick look at. And then output for plotting and then any of the add-ins, et cetera. But most of the time in LT, you know, you're going to be on uh, one of these first couple of uh, layout tabs. Um, as I said, down on the bottom, we have the command line. So if I just type in line, right, we can start a line command, and I can just draw a line. Um, you also can hit F2, and that will show you a little bit of history about uh, what you've been doing recently. So in this case, there hasn't been a lot happening, right? I started a line command and not, not much more. Um, but sometimes if you, uh, you know, if I did like an ID of the end of this line and, you know, did something else, right? That line or that ID or the coordinates of that line are no longer visible. Hitting F2 will make that visible again so you can see what the coordinates of that uh, particular point was. And then on the bottom here, this is really an important section as well, um, so your status bar. And that'll tell you uh, the, the current settings of several, several different types of variables, as well as um, you know, uh, controlling various things, like going from model space to paper space and stuff. There's actually a long list of things here. Um, ortho mode is one, right, polar tracking. Um, object tracking, so we'll get into this in a little bit. Uh, but there's more settings that are available. If you go over to the, the far right and you select on customization, you'll see that there's other things that you can see, like you know, if you want to see the coordinates of where your cursor is, you could turn that on. Um, dynamic input, line weights, all kinds of different things. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into every single one of these components. But uh, just let you know that there's more than what's set up by default, so you can turn things on. One thing that can happen, though, if you turn too many of these settings on, is that it can start encroaching on your layouts. So you might have a drawing with five layouts where uh, the layout tabs will come out to you know over here somewhere, right? To create a new layout, you can just pick on the little um, plus sign, and you can start adding additional layouts. But if the status bar gets too long, then what can happen is uh, you can end up with the um, uh, command line basically moving up and down uh, because there's not enough room for things. So one thing you might want to do is just right click on a layout tab and you could tell it to dock it above the status bar so that it, even if this extended all the way out to the far left edge of the screen, it's not going to force us to jump up and down. So that's a, a really common support thing that we get is, you know, my screen keeps flickering, and that's really what the cause of that is. So you can, uh, you can have a whole lot of information shown, but just move the, the tabs up by selecting uh, dock above the uh, status bar. Um, so let's talk about a few of the various palettes and, and things. So I'm going to go over to the, uh, to the view tab here. And the first palette I'm going to bring up is something called the tool palette. And the tool palette has some general blocks that you may or may not want to use. Um, the uh, little lightning bolts here are uh, basically indicating that it's a dynamic block. And a dynamic block you can think of uh, uh, as a smart block. Right. Um, it may be that you can specify um, different scales for something. Um, maybe you have a door that comes in two-inch increments, and you can have a different block for each of those two-inch increments and automatically uh, select one so you don't end up with a 30-and-a-half-inch door. You know, this is going to be a 30-inch door, a 32-inch door, et cetera. Um, but there's, uh, so there's some architectural components in here. I'll just sh show you, like, um, if I do a door, so a block is basically a, a, a collection of geometry and text and such. Um, so if I select on this, 
you'll see that there's a, uh, a little grip for the door size and I can um, just select which size I want by using this block and it's only going to allow me to jump into the sizes that I that I have defined. So that's kind of a dynamic block. I'll, I'll show you how to create a block in a little bit as well. So there's a, a bunch of stuff here on the tool palette. You can always right click and create a new palette. Um, let's just call it my stuff. And then you can add things to the palette at any point. So if I wanted this block on here, I could just take it. Actually, I'd have to save the file first. I'll just do save. I don't care where it is because it doesn't matter. And I can just drag and drop it to my palette and it will add my block in there. I could even just take a line and drag a line on and create a line tool. And you'll see that when I drag the line on, it actually creates a smart little thing where I can say, oh, I really want an arc instead. And I can toggle between the basic types of uh, simple geometry, lines, axe, circles, so that I can just sit there and draw whatever I want. So you can drag just about anything onto a tool palette and create the tools that you use all the time inside of AutoCAD uh, on your own custom palette. So that's uh, tool palettes and very, very powerful um, set of controls here and definitely something that uh, I recommend that you take advantage of. Uh, the next one is the property palette and the property palette uh, comes in two states I guess if you, if you will. There is a um, uh, the full property palette which is what you see here. So if I select on the circle and I look at the property palette it tells me that I've selected a circle that's on a layer which I'll talk about in a little bit here as well what the coordinates are how big it is etc and if I pick on something else like a line right, I get different settings so it's going to give you the properties for whatever it is that you're selecting there's also a quick access properties um, option that you could use and uh, that basically just shows a subset of the types of stuff that you're looking at so it might just have the color and the layer and, um, you know, maybe nothing else. Right? It's just going to have a, just a couple of properties. So you can choose between either one of those things. So uh, I don't know what happened to my tool, oh, my tool ballot. Um, there's also something called the Sheet Set Manager. And the Sheet Set Manager is a way to organize files into a project. So, for example, uh, I have a... Uh, a project here, let's see, it could be recent webinars, this one. Um, I've got a project here and I've got a number of different drawings that I can uh, uh, open up uh, for this particular project directly from this um, file organizer, if you will. Um, so it's a, it's a great way to you know, maybe you'd, if you're doing with, dealing with an architectural plan, you have floor plans and elevations and sections and such all listed in here. And you could uh, plot out the entire project uh, using the Sheet Set Manager with a single um, option as opposed to opening up each one of those files and plotting things out. Uh, so it's a great way to organize things. And again, I'm not going to, I don't have time to go into all of the details of what the Sheet Set Manager can do, but um, you can see that it has uh, sheet lists, uh, views, and model views, and um, you can have all of your files in a project combined into the single sheet set. Um, layer dialog box. Uh, again, something that you end up using a lot inside of AutoCAD. And this is going to allow you to um, name layers. Uh, however you want. So you see layers here like border and cabinetry and dimensions and foundations, etc. So that you can identify what something is in a drawing um, by the name that it's, that it's on. And then you have states like on or freeze. Um, so you have on or off or freeze and thaw basically are the, are the options here. Um, on is a, a real quick way to turn things on or off. It uh, basically just hides the, the geometry that's on the file. Um, but 
freeze is, is usually a better option because freeze will actually not only hide the geometry, but it completely takes the geometry out of the display buffer. So when you do a, a regen or something, something that's causing a regeneration of the display, that, uh, that um, those objects will not be impacted at all. And then you have um, an option here called lock. Um, basically, if you lock a layer, you can't edit anything on that layer. So it, it, uh, it you know, things will stay on the same layer. It um, won't allow you to move it or erase it or copy it or anything like that. Um, it's just going to be fixed. And then, you know, color. People like to see things uh, in um, various, uh, you know, colors here. Right? If you look at this, the model display, you know, um, it makes it a lot easier for you to see what's going on by by changing things in color. Sorry about my mouse jumping around here, it's being a little fast. Um, line type, um, so not everything wants to be a continuous line, right? If I zoom in here, you'll see that there's a dash line here. Um, you, you know, there are center lines, so, you know, long dash, small dash, dots, etc. Um, you can have a dotted line type. Uh, there's all kinds of different line types, including you can do, you know, some complex line types which again is a little bit much. Um, and then, you know, in addition to that, you can, uh, you can basically override line weights and transparency. So transparency is, uh, you know, how, how heavy do you want to see the object? Maybe you want something to fade away so you can make it 50% transparent. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the cool thing that was added uh, a number of years ago used to be that basically we had this one layer called def points, which is a non-plottable layer, and that layer will never plot. But you can make any layer you want non-plottable just by picking on the little icon. So, you know, you want it to show up as a reference in the drawing file, but you don't want to see it when you plot out your sheet. You could just make these layers non-plottable. So um, that's that one. Uh, let's just get out of the way for a second. By the way, you can see that um, you, you can set these palettes up um, so that they will always stay open. So if you had like a second screen and you just wanted to have the layer palette open for some, whatever reason, you could just leave it open. Or you can pick on this little uh, auto hide icon. And basically what happens is as I move my cursor over the, the bar, it opens up. Once I move my cursor off of it, it will collapse down to a single bar. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll show you another little trick here with the two palettes in a second. Um, and then uh, the probably the well, there's two other ones that I think that are useful. Uh, one is the reference manager. So um, inside of AutoCAD, it's a good idea to not put all your chickens in a single basket or all your eggs in a single basket. Uh, so what I mean by that is uh, if you're dealing with an, an architectural floor plan like this one. Um, this has all the elevations, the floor plans, the sections, the roofs, all in one file. I don't recommend that as a good practice. But what I would do is I would have um, your know, floor plan or something in one file and then reference it into another drawing uh, for doing elevations and doing sections. So you can still have the, the base geometry in the file. But when you start having everything in one file, if, if this file becomes corrupt or you accidentally delete it or uh, somebody overwrites it or whatever, um, you're, you're basically you know, completely out of luck. And, and the performance is going to be slower by having everything in one drawing file. So um, use external references to manage that. You basically, you can just say, I want to attach a drawing file. Go ahead and select the file you want and attach it to your uh, drawing, and it becomes a just something in the background that you could use. Um, so XREFs are, are great, and all of these topics are covered in much more depth than in a lot of the other webinars. And the last one that I want to talk about here is Design Center. And Design Center is a, is a great tool for kind of stealing things from other drawing files. So if I look at, you know, I've got this wall-based drawing open and um, I can sit there and grab blocks and I can actually pull a drawing or a block out of one drawing and drop it into my current drawing file. So it will allow you to, you know, mine into a one drawing and get 
stuff, whether it be dimension styles or blocks or whatever, from that drawing without actually opening it. So it's a it's a great tool for uh, from you know um, sharing work from one drawing to another. So now you get all of these palettes open, and you know if if I even with them minimized like this, you know you, you've got a, an awful lot of real estate that's being taken up by these things. So one thing you can do with these palettes, and I would recommend, is you can pick right click on the edge of it and say I want to allow docking. And then you can anchor it to the left or the right side of your screen. So if I just sit there and I start anchoring these, right? I'm just going to anchor them all to the left, but you could put some on the left, some on the right if you want to. So now I've got all my palettes all on that one little tiny edge of the screen. And if I hover over any of these, it'll open up to show you the entire palette. So it's a it's a great way to optimize the the workspace that you're that you have within the uh, within your uh, drawing area. Um, I mentioned I wanted to show something here in the full version of AutoCAD, so I'm just going to open up a new drawing inside the full version of AutoCAD, and you're going to see that in the full AutoCAD that there are some additional um, tools up or palettes up at the top. Uh, one of the most noticeable ones is Express Tools, and that's a, a great set of additional functionality that's only available in the full AutoCAD because it requires uh, AutoLisp that uh, AutoCAD LT does not support. But it's a great set of tools um, that opt, you know, will speed up your know, productivity. So you definitely want to take a look at Express Tools. Uh, but AutoCAD, the full AutoCAD also has 3D modeling tools and rendering tools in it. But you don't see those here in the uh, in the um, default display. So to get those, you can simply uh, either change the the workspace, or I can sit there and uh, right click on the edge here, and I can show things like 3D tools, and that'll add that palette into the menu. So now I have my solids and all of the tools for doing 3D modeling that uh, were not visible before. So um, it's a, it's a little hidden because it's not visible by default in the default workspace, but just know that you, you do have access to those tools as well. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show basically in the full AutoCAD. I'll go back to LT here. <clears throat> all right, so, uh, oh, actually I should forget to, about that too. Just making a note, I forgot something else I wanted to show. Uh, so a couple of things um, I mentioned, do a zoom extents. Um, so one one thing is panning and zooming and all of that, right? So I just did what the, we call a zoom extents. So it'll zoom out and show you everything that that's visible in the drawing. Um, so that's the zoom command, buttons in zoom, and then extents, right? So I'll zoom out to everywhere. If you just hit the space bar, it'll repeat the command, and then I could say, you know, I want to zoom on a window. And I just want to see what's in that one little space, and I'll zoom into that area. So there's various options for uh, for zooming around. The companion to this command is the pan command, and it says just pan, and that uh, allows you to basically move around, but it'll stay at the same zoom factor. So you're still seeing the same amount of, of stuff, but allows you to move around within the file. So those are two very, very common tool uh, commands that you use inside of AutoCAD. Um, so uh, function keys and keyboard shortcuts. I just want to talk about that real quick, too, before I get into things. Um, um, I could do it now. We can do it later. But uh, one of the things that I have uh, in the, that I'll be posting on the, um, with the PowerPoint slides and such is this um, document here that has a printout of what all of the various um, function keys and keyboard shortcuts do inside of AutoCAD. So I mentioned like if you hit F2, whoops, I just scrolled up there. There we go. If I hit F2, it, it toggles to the text screen, right? Um, hitting F1 displays help for a particular object. Uh, F3 and F8 are very common things that you want to be familiar with. One is um, toggling object snaps on and off, 
and the other is toggling something called ortho mode on or off. And this document actually goes through with what each thing does and what the default keyboard shortcut is for the various commands. So you know, if we get to L and you look at L for, you know, we'll start the line command, LA starts the layer command, et cetera. So this is a great reference document. Um, I recommend printing this out and, and having it available because uh, it, you know, as, you, as I said, typing makes things much more productive. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's uh, <clears throat> that will be posted with the rest of these files. <clears throat> and hopefully I can keep talking because I'm gagging a little bit. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so we talked about um, the palette, the user interface. <clears throat> Let's go through uh, some of the basic um, drafting commands. So if we go over to the uh, home tab, you have you know basic tools like line, polyline, circle, arc, etc. <clears throat> Very simple to use. Most of these, uh, some of these commands have multiple options uh, for how things are drawn. Uh, some of them are very basic. So if I just wanted to draw a line, right, I can just pick up a, a, you know, start the line command or type L for line. And you can see that I, I get, give it a, um, a start point, and then I can do whatever I want, you know, drag it in any direction that I want to. So I can just start picking and drawing lines. Uh, if you're drawing something like a building, maybe I want to make sure that I'm going off in a particular, you know, just up and down as opposed to, uh, you know, just willy-nilly like this. So that's where um, the F8 key or ortho mode comes in. If you hit F8, it is going to force you into just the, you know, basic planes. It won't uh, allow you to draw or off at an angle. So I can guarantee that I'm going straight up and straight down. Hit F8 again, and I can draw wherever I want. So um, that's a, a great option. I'm going to kind of combine this with the object snaps real quick as well. Um, oops, zoom back out a little bit. So I mentioned a little bit about object snaps. Uh, it's object tracking, object snap settings. So there's a bunch of different object snaps that are available. And when you draw inside of AutoCAD, you typically want to be using an object snap. Uh, it's not good enough if I say, you know, if I draw a line and I have object snaps off, and I just say, okay, that's about right, right, and I draw it in there. If I zoom in, you can see that I didn't actually get the corner of that line. But if I draw a line and I have an object snap turned on, it's going to actually snap to it. So you get this little marker showing that there's a, a point there, and it will guarantee that I selected that corner of that line. So um, you want to be using object snaps much more often than not when you're, when you're drawing inside of AutoCAD. So let me go back to look at this again. And you know these are the, the object snaps that are available for, uh, for AutoCAD LT. So you basically have endpoint. It's going to get the end of a line or circle. Or, well, you can't get the end of a circle, a line or a polyline or something like that. Um, midpoint will get the middle of an object. Uh, center would be the you know, center of an arc or a circle. Um, Geometric center is a is a cool one that uh, was added um, at last couple of releases, and basically you can draw whatever kind of shape you want uh, as a polygon, and then uh, it'll find the geometric center of that that area um, for you, which is kind of neat. Node is a uh, is an uh, well, I won't say it's an odd one, but um, it is a little bit odd. It's for selecting something called a point, and a point is basically a dot within AutoCAD. So something that's maybe going to use as a reference or something, you don't really want it to to show up in the drawing file, or you know, want it to be very minor in the in the drawing file, but uh, allows you to snap to to things. Um, quadrant is again for you know round things, uh, selecting the corner of a, of a circle, if you will. Uh, intersection, you know, where something is meeting something else. Uh, extension for um, 
kind of projected away from things. Insertion would be the the defined point for a block or a piece of text or something. Um, so that's that's useful. Uh, snapping to something perpendicular to something else. Tangent to a circle, so the edge and stuff. Uh, near is just going to be um, anywhere along it but on something. So it um, could be any point along a line or along a polyline or along a circle. Uh, apparent intersection for you know what would be an intersection if you would extend things and then you can also do parallel so all kinds of, of snaps to help you with things you can see here that I've only got some of the snaps turned on and typically you don't want too many on because then you don't find the things that you really care about so you kind of turn on the, the object snaps that are important to you and leave the other ones alone so if I draw a line I can get to the end point or, uh, you know, if I, I don't, did I have midpoint on? I don't even know. No, I'll turn midpoint on too. So I could go endpoint, or as I get down closer, I get midpoint, um, or I can get the intersection. And you'll see that the little icon will change based on what I'm snapping to. So if I wanted the midpoint there, I just grab it and I can draw off on the side. Um, if you needed some other uh, other option, like I wanted to use near, if I start the line command again and I hold shift and hit the right mouse button, it'll bring up the uh, shortcut for uh, the object snaps. And then I can say, okay, I, I really want nearest. And then you can see that basically I can snap to anywhere along the, the line here um, because it's uh, going to use that temporary object snap. Um, I've got a really fancy drawing here happening, don't I, Nat, Ashley? <laughs> um, so let me, uh, let me uh, I'll kind of combine a few things here uh, to talk about uh, some of the other commands. Um, so a line, um, you can see, is just a single set of, of geometry. And there are also grips, so I can always change things just using a grip. Um, lets you kind of move things around where you want right, just by picking on things. But a line is just an individual component. So when I look at this, these components or lines that I drew, right, they're all individual entities. If I wanted to, uh, that's, that's part of the drawing, if I wanted something that was continuous, I could use something called a polyline. And a polyline is a single object that happens to represent, you know, um, whatever it is you're trying to draw. Right, so I can sit here and draw things, and then when I when I'm done, if you want, you can type in C for close, and what I just created was a single piece of geometry instead of a bunch of individual components that aren't really related to one another. So um, it, it can have a lot of benefit here. Right? I can modify things just by using the grips, stretching things around. Um, you can also, by the way, that was the erase command. I just typed in E for erase. Um, you can also do a polyline here, and I can say I want to um, switch to an arc mode, and now I've got an arc, and then switch back to a line and do whatever it is that you need to here. So you can have very complex sets of geometry. In fact, um, there's a command called pedit, and if I select on this, um, you could do things like I could turn it into what we call a spline, which is a nice fancy little curve. And you know, if I start manipulating the grips here, it's going to try to keep that as smooth as possible, depending on what what is your drawing. So you can do an awful lot with those couple of commands. Um, just use erase again, right? Um, Circle is a little bit more complex. You know, circle by default is going to be, you know, pick a center and specify a radius. But you can also do other things. Like I can say I could pick a center, and I could say I want to specify the the diameter instead. And um, now I'm drawing, you know, the diameter. So if I said this was going to be six feet across, 
I now just do a six foot diameter circle instead of a, you know using a three foot radius. Um, and then there are other options as well. Um, if you pick on the little drop down, you can do two point, three point tangents, and all kinds of stuff here. So um, you know there there are many different ways to draw draw things. Oh, uh, this gives another point actually. Um, if you just hover over a command, AutoCAD's going to give you a uh, little tooltip that tells you a little bit about that particular command. So a little example of how to use a two-point circle uh, or where you might want to do it. If I go down to three-point, right, it's telling you what a three-point circle does. So it's, it'll give you a little tip. And then if you hit F1 while hovering over anything, it should bring you directly to the help for that uh, command. So this brings me right to the circle command. So um, highly recommend using the tooltips and also uh, you know using the help as you're learning things. And the way that I learned AutoCAD, um, speed up here a little bit because I'm running a little bit behind. The way that I learned AutoCAD is I literally spent maybe a, an hour or so with somebody learning the very basics like I'm talking about today, and then spent uh, maybe uh, you know 15 minutes a day learning a new command each day and or digging further into a particular command. So um, in no time at all, you can become extremely proficient with AutoCAD just by, you know, kind of teaching yourself. Um, so, you know, arc is another basic command, right? You can just draw, um, it's basically part of a circle. Um, there is some specialty types of things like rectangle, which, you know, I can draw any rectangle I want. Um, there is a, a uh, it's a hatch. There's a ellipse. So an ellipse is a actually kind of a specialty little critter uh, inside of <laughs> inside of the geometry world. Um, but uh, you can draw true ellipses inside of AutoCAD. Uh, and then there's also a, a polygon. Uh, so if I pick the drop down here, um, you, you get some additional things. Region. Wipe out the polyline donut, the vision clouds, and somewhere in there there's a polygon. But polygon, and again, you can always type things polygon. I can say I want a five sided object and I want it inscribed, and I can draw you know, a, a pentagon or something like that. So there's uh, the ability to draw all those types of things. Um, hatch is a really important one. Um, so there's, if I select on hatch, there's a couple different kinds of hatches, um, but, but they they all work the same. So if I basically select hatch and I select on this this geometry, um, you know, it'll hatch it with whatever fill pattern you want. Um, if I select it, this is also a, a really cool thing inside of AutoCAD, is it'll bring up a, um, a contextual tab with all the kinds of different settings. So I can change the pattern or I could change the uh, the scale of it or something like that. So if I said scale of 10, I don't know if I, yeah, you can see, you know, that you can actually start seeing the hatch pattern there. I had it set up as too small of a hatch pattern when I first drew it. Um, and you can preset all of this as well. So uh, just a couple things about the basic editing commands. Um, erase is pretty straightforward. I pick on something, I hit, hit erase, and it deletes it. If I want to move something, there's a move command, M for move, and I can move things around wherever I want. Right? Um, stretch, and again, I I like typing because it's faster for me than finding things in the in the ribbon. But stretch is just it's all up here in, in the ribbon. Uh, allows you to you know just move, make things bigger or smaller, right? Um, rotate. So rotate is basically going to give it a base point, and then I can uh, if I turn ortho off, I can just sit there and rotate it whichever direction I want. Um, there's also dynamic input that you could use for a lot of these things, but uh, again, we're going to try and keep things a little quick here. Um, trim and extend. Let's go move this up a little bit here just to get some overlapping geometry. So trim and extend, basically, um, if I select trim and I select some stuff, that it'll give you a little um, 
preview of what's going to happen. It's basically going to remove the pieces that I'm selecting here. So you know, get rid of stuff that you that you don't want. Uh, extend is the opposite of that, right? If I select things, uh, I should be able to select this. I can extend things out to other stuff so that it'll just you know go out and meet. Um, fillet and chamfer. See where do I have a good spot for fillet? Uh, let's see. So fillet will allow me to pick two things, and it'll basically extend both of them so that they meet. And then uh, chamfer is a little bit different. Um, let me. Uh, I should go back to my rectangle. Where's my rectangle? Sorry, my mouse is really being jumpy today. Chamfer is a kind of a. It's very similar to fillet, but I can sit there and say that uh, I want to. Um, do a chamfer with a distance of this far, and um, when I select on these pieces, it's basically going to kind of trim them back and create a nice little corner for you. So there's diff all kinds of different options for using chamfer, but uh, um, that's kind of the basics. And then um, the array command. So let's see. Let's take my uh, my little polygon here, and I'm going to use array and select it, and it's going to say, ask me if I want a rectangular or a polar array. I'm going to do a rectangular, and then I can just sit there and say uh, I want you know six row uh, columns and two rows or whatever, um, and you can specify the distance between them. You know, I want these to be. 10 feet apart instead, you could, um, and it will, it'll just, uh, you know, make copies of whatever you're selecting. Um, and you can also do similar thing with the polar array. So if I have a line and I use array again, this time I'm going to use the polar option. So I'm going to select polar and uh, select the center point and I want I don't know, 15 items in the array, right? Do whatever you want. And you could, uh, you know, it'll just um, copy things at whatever inc increments it need to at an angle. So that's that. So all of this, all I've done so far has been all placing things on whatever the default layer is. And I mentioned, uh, you know, layers, right? Um, if I come over and I change to, to the deck layer, and you can see that that also changes here in my um, ribbon. I just changed the deck, and that, now I draw something. Right? It's now going to be red as opposed to white because deck is defined as being red. So you can sit there and uh, pick whatever layers you want, either from the ribbon or by making it current and changing it. You can also do it after the fact um, by selecting the objects and go over to properties and I'm going to change this from layer notes to layer I don't know railing whatever uh, well, railing is the same color <laughs> uh, properties oh what's going on there Colors by layer. Oh. Well, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, you can see if you select multiple objects, it will say varies. But I can sit there and uh, change it to you know, a different layer. That's dark blue, which is almost impossible to see. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, you, but you want to definitely use layers as you're moving things. Um, let's see. Kind of, I talked about what the various object snaps are. Um, maybe we'll leave it at that for the time being. But one thing I, I wanted to talk about uh, as well was object tracking. And you, you could see this a little bit when I started drawing around here. Um, if, I, <clears throat> if I start drawing something, 
Oh, come on. Stop jumping around. <laughs> and oh, come on, stop jumping. And I grab the end point of a line and I start moving my cursor. You see the, the green line that's showing up? This is a object tracking line. So um, basically it's giving you a preview of what's happening. But um, object tracking actually can be used for some pretty cool things. Like, so I just grabbed the end of that one line. And then I'm just going to hover over this other line and grab the endpoint there. And now I, you can see that I'm getting a, uh, an extension of that. Let me just do that again so you can see it. So I get an extension of this one, and I get an extension of that one. And when I get to the intersection, it'll automatically show both. So I can draw a line from the intersection of those two points or those two apparent intersections. It's a, a great way to, to, instead of, you know, drawing something up and then trimming it and deleting it and whatever, you can just use those extension lines. <clears throat> and then uh, the last thing I'm going to cover real quick is uh, viewports and stuff. So um, if basically in AutoCAD, there's model space and paper space. Model space is where you draw stuff. Paper space is where you plot stuff is the simplest way to, to think of things. And when you look at paper space, um, you can think of this as a real sheet of paper, and uh, maybe this is a 24 by 36. I don't know what size I'm in here at the moment. But it's a real sheet of paper, and what you do is you cut a hole in that paper to be able to see the model space geometry underneath it, which is called a viewport. So you can use uh, different types of commands. The uh, simplest thing is using uh, mView to create a viewport. And I'm just going to do something off on the side just so you can kind of see what happens. But I just do a, a, a view, and it cuts a hole down so you can see what's down below it. Now, you don't want to just randomly um, cut a hole and just plot. You want to set up a scale and things of this uh, viewport. So if I come over, let's see if I can even get to the viewport. Let's see, it's a block. Uh, I think my viewport layer is frozen. All right, so let me just uh, create a new layout real quick. OK, so I just um, I'll start from the beginning here. So I created a new sheet of paper. You're going to use the mView command, and you're going to uh, create your view within the sheet. Maybe I want to leave some room for a title block and stuff. And then what you want to do is you want to select the viewport and you want to set up a scale. So down in the bottom here, we can say I want this to be quarter inch to a foot or eighth inch to a foot or whatever it is that you want to plot it at. And then if I pick on the inside, um, oops, come on you not cooperating with me today. So you can come into the, uh, the sheet here and get them and say eighth inch to a foot. There we go. So we get a nice, nice size view there. Um, so now when I plot this out, this is going to plot out at an eighth inch to a foot. You can see that if I'm in model space, so basically you can be in paper space here where I'm zooming the entire sheet of paper. Or if I double click on the inside, I'm actually in model space, and then it's zooming the model. And if you look at the scale down here in the bottom, you can see when I'm zooming the model, I'm basically changing the scale of the drawing. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep the scale the same. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to pan this over so you get the view that I want. And then go back into paper space, select the viewport, go over here to properties, and I'm going to say I want to lock the view at an eighth inch to a foot. So now, even though I'm in, uh, I go in and I'm in model space, if I zoom, it's maintaining that scale. So you're not accidentally going to plot it at the wrong scale. So that's, uh, I think, about all the time I have. Um, I know uh, learning AutoCAD in 50 minutes is a, is a stretch, but uh, hopefully that uh, gives people an idea as to um, you know, what the software is, you know, or how it works and what it can do. And I'll pass back over to Ashley to wrap things up real quick.
Dave, thanks. That was a really great intro in, in 50 minutes, so great for you for doing that. Um, so let me just take back so you can see my screen. Can you see my screen okay? Okay, so we have um, some general additional resources for AutoCAD and AutoCAD um, LT as well as um, service packs for you, to, for you to download. And then to dive deeper into the topics that Dave uh, covered today, we have some resources for you. The first one is a link to all of our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar videos. So we have a ton of videos. We've been doing the webinars for the last year and a half, year and a half, yeah. So um, please check out these, um, these links. They really go into more detail um, about what Dave covered today. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to email us. We're always happy to, to get your feedback and, and any questions or um, anything that you might want to share with us. So please feel free to email us. And before we get to the Q&A, we just have one final poll for today. And that poll is, did you learn something new in today's session? So that was a, that was a pretty quick poll. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the results here. So it looks like 81% of you did learn something new and 19% did not learn something new. So I think that's, I think that's pretty good, Dave. All right, so now we'll get to some Q&A. So, uh, Nauman, uh, I guess, is there any specific questions that need to be answered? or? Uh, no, just um, very, somebody asked about uh, the command line, that uh, history that shows up, and I think uh, Brian took care of that. Uh, it's a system variable. You may want to just kind of let people know those are new, about just a very quick about system variables and um, <laughs> just uh, like it spends the, the advanced yeah. uh, variables <laughs> or the, uh, the past webinars. Uh, I posted the link in there as well because uh, we have covered uh, an enormous amount of uh, advanced topics and most of uh, what Dave covered uh, has been covered in a lot more detail so I would highly recommend that and then um, go into the YouTube videos and taking a look at them. Yeah, system variables is a tough one. Uh, you could spend days talking about system variables. Uh, so <laughs> um, I'll just say that uh, if you go to help and you know, there's a direct link to system variables, you can take a look through there. And I re recommend not changing any unless you need to. <laughs> Uh, good, good advice. And then uh, the command completion was something added uh, new to as well. So in the command uh, pro, uh, the command line. Uh, so I just uh, is an awesome way to quickly type things. As you were struggling with the polygon to trying to find the command, but sometimes if you start typing poly or something like that, it will automatically also uh, you know try to give you suggestions as well. And that's an mm -hmm. awesome tool these days that I use even finding layers or block names and things. Yeah, it's a, that's a great point because that's uh, as long as you know kind of, you know, if you type in line, it's going to show you anything with line in the command name. It doesn't even have to start with line. So it's a, that's a great option. Okay. It looks like there are a couple of questions down here about the materials and where people can find them. So everything, all the materials, the PowerPoint, the the um, the drawing files, it's all going to be up on that um, box folder. And I think now, Manny, he was ahead of me, he sent out the link, so everyone should have the link now. Yeah, and it, it'll take probably uh, maybe a day before the, you know, we send out the email with all of the, the links and stuff, but uh, everybody will get an email um, with all the information as well. And I think we're about out of time, so I'd just like to thank everybody that showed up for coming and uh, tell all your friends that are learning AutoCAD that there's some great information out there for them, um, not just this webinar, but all the other webinars that we've done. So if you have a co-worker's learning, it's a great place to start. And thank you very much, and we'll see you all again, hopefully, in a, in a month. Thank you.